welcome learners to our first lesson uh, on classification one and we shall begin with a review on the use of magnifying lens but first of all let us go through the introductory part uh, we shall begin with definition of the term classification and classification simply means putting organisms into groups the terms used alongside classification include organizing um, sorting ordering among others so you have to put living organisms into their respective uh, groups and that is what we call classification this uh, grouping or sorting is based on the study of external characteristics of a living organism for example we have a uh, a human being and a chicken the two are animals but you will find that uh, a human being will belong to the uh, class mammalia because it has the mammary glands and the fur both these characteristics are external a chicken will belong to the class of birds because of possessing the feathers on, uh, on their bodies so we are looking at the external features classification involves detailed observation of structure and functions of the organism so we do not just have to look at the external features we have also to look at other things which are detailed um, uh, features and even the functions of that particular organism organisms with, with similar characteristics are placed in one group for example the group of mammals because all mammals have a mammary glands and they have fur and hair on their uh, bodies when it comes to fish uh, all fish have fins so they and they even breathe using uh, the gills so they are put in one um, group that is now what we are saying classification the differences in structure are also used to distinguish one group from another so there are also differences observed among uh, individuals the magnifying lens is an instrument that assists in the observation of fine structure for example uh, the magnifying uh, lens enlarges hairs so you are able to observe the, uh, observe them in detail <clears throat> remember magnification has no units so this is our magnifying lens it has a handle and it has a frame to which a, a convex lens is fixed so this convex lens is the one that is involved in enlarging things now how do we use a magnifying lens so a specimen is placed on the table or a bench or you hold it on your hand then you move the magnifying lens uh, towards your eyes until the object is clearly focused and an enlarged image is seen so apart from this name magnifying lens you have had the word hand lens so they are the same thing now after having uh, seen an enlarged image uh, then you can now calculate uh, magnification using this formula that uh, uh, drawing magnification is given by the length over of the drawing over the length of the object so how do we apply this formula for example if magnification of a drawing is times 4 so meaning this image has been magnified or enlarged four times and whatever is drawn is 8 centimeters now what is the actual length or the real length of this object so we will say that the actual uh, image will be now so we interchange this we are here looking for the length of the image so you when you cross multiply here and cross multiply here then uh, you will eliminate this one on this side so you will have uh, magnification and length of the object on this side so we want to remain with the length of the object so we are going to divide magnification on that side and magnification on this uh, side so we will eliminate uh, magnification and we will have that the length of the object or the actual length to be the length 
of the uh, drawing divided by magnification and that is now that we have uh, eight that is the uh, drawing length to be eight and the uh, magnification to be times four so we divide you get two centimeters it is very easy to calculate uh, that one so you can play along with this formula so you can be even told to calculate magnification so at that time you will just use your formula the way it is and at that time maybe you will have been provided with a uh, the length of the drawing and even the length of the object so you can uh, uh, try as many examples as you can for to give you a better understanding now we move ahead and look at external features of plants and animals. We will begin with those external features found in plants. We have what we call a rhizoid and setter in, in most uh, plants. In form 3, we shall look in detail uh, uh, how these uh, most plants look like, but the rhizoids are like roots uh, in the in in, in in most plants in in these other plants setter is the one that is holding the spores is the one that is holding the capsule and the capsule contains the spores so uh so this is a typical most plant we have fronds uh what you call sorry and rushes in in fans so fronds are the uh, actually uh group of leaves which are large we have the sorry uh, which are holding the spores uh-huh and then we have the ratches these ratches are the ones that are holding the leaflets together in position then these other plants like beans and sukumawiki what we are calling higher plants uh, like the mangoes uh, they have roots stems leaves flowers they even have seeds they even have fruits and cones uh, not all of them have cones huh? mm -hmm. cones are found in plants like uh, uh, cy cypress and uh, pinuses then we have external features of animals we have what we call tentacles in hydra we have the feathers and wings in birds shells of a snail the sensory organs like eyes ears and antenna the antenna are found in arthropods or insects have antennae we have fur hair and mammal glands in mammals uh, scales and fins in fish we have these uh, proglotids and collex in tapeworms so this proglotid is used as a mouth for sucking uh, uh, nutrients from host by tapeworms. Then we have locomotory structures like uh, limbs uh, in arthropods and vertebrates. So these are like legs or even hands. They are calling them limbs in arthropods. Arthropods are insects and vertebrates are those animals that have a backbone including you and me, chicken, a rat, a frog and many other organisms we also have body pigmentation as an external feature so body pigmentation is just the color some are brown some are dark uh, and uh, several other uh, colors so we want also to move ahead and look at uh, practical activities the first practical activity is uh, the use of collecting nets huh? Uh, cutting instruments and handlings. So how are we going to, uh, to use these instruments to study the external features of plants and animals? So we have what we call the forceps which are used to collect crawling and slow moving organisms. So those organisms that uh, crawl and are injurious, you do not just uh, pick using your hand. You must have the aid of an instrument. Then the sweep nets are used to catch flying insects like bees, uh, butterflies, grasshoppers, all those insects that fly. Then cutting instruments like scalpel uh, are used to cut specimen in, or making sections or dissect. So you cut small pieces, we are going to use uh, these ones, these cutting instruments uh, to cut. 
and then we have the hand lens or what we call the magnifying and uh, magnifying lens to enlarge small pl uh, plants and animals now after you have done the magnification so the drawings of the magnified organisms are made and their linear uh, magnification calculated so the main practical activity here is to collect and observe in detail uh, small plants like most plant or even a fan or even a bean plant so we have to look for the following uh, in most plant ensure you uh, you get a most plant with rhizoids and uh, spore capules and these are just found in damp places within our school compounds and even our homes for fans we just have to look at the rhizomes with the advantageous roots uh, you have these enlarged uh, leaves that is the fronds and sorry sorry are a group of sporangia which contain spores and the spores which are found in these uh, sorry or, uh, or sporangia are the ones that are involved in reproduction remember when these sorry learn, land on a suitable uh, ground they also grow into new plants so in seed plants or those plants that bear seeds we look at uh, uh, the woody plants and non-woody plants so uh, woody plants are those that have hard stems for example um, uh, for example a mango tree cypress tree and uh, non-woody uh, uh, non-woody stems uh, include the beans those all blackjack all those that have weak stems and they depend on water for strength or what we call turgidity now if you in these ones you have to look at the root system whether they are fibrous whether they are advantageous and whether they are tap roots and then you just make a drawing of them you enlarge and even uh, draw uh, them and calculate the linear magnification of each so you have also to look at what you call the stem then in the stem you look at the position and the length of the internode so the internodes are those places where we uh, we have the branches emerging from so those are small tiny parts mm, that are very delicate uh, that eventually become branches are the what we are calling the internodes so you have to look at their length and even their uh, positions you also have to look at the type of leaves are they a simple leaf or a compound a leaf a simple leaf is the one uh, the one for like the one for skuma wiki or a maize plant a compound leaf has many but as uh, tiny leaves so look at the arrangement of compound leaves they, they are actually many so are they alternating are they on the opposite are they hold just examine and they come to a conclusion and then the flower color yeah you have to look at the flower color uh, the flower you look at the color the number of parts of a flower there are those that are having five parts uh, and many others so we have to look also at the size and the relative position of each uh, flower and in fruit you have to examine whether it is a, fl a, a fleshy or a dry uh, fruit so dry fruits uh, like maize and beans those are dry fruits a fleshy fruit is uh, for those uh, that have juice in them yeah, they are succulent for example a mango avocado orange yeah, those are having flesh and meat inside then in the fruits also we have those that are edible and that are not edible edible means that fruits we can eat and edible in uh, not edible we cannot eat them so th we have this kind of fruit that cannot be eaten because of uh, uh, the poison they contain you look at the seeds mm, examine we have those that are monocotyledonous they have two uh, they have one cotyledon like maize seed when they have we also have dicotyledonous uh, seeds like that of avocado you can divide into two they have two pieces of uh, cotyledons or those of uh, beans peas all those are having uh, uh, two cotyledons and we call them dicotyledonous um, seeds so our final practical activity now after having looked at the uh, the plant uh, external features we want to look at uh, uh, and collection and detailed observation of small animals so you just have to collect small animals like earthworms 
uh, from the soil we have ticks collecting grasshoppers butterflies beetles um, then you observe these animals to see the following the number of legs how many legs the do tick uh, have uh, even or grasshoppers or this just or this or any or any other organisms you will have collect from your environment then a presence or absence of wing for example here uh, earthworm and a tick uh, do not have wings but these others fly have they have wings the number of antenna which are these are sensory organs on their heads so look examine them and then the body covering yeah what 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 covers their bodies and then body parts they are those that have uh, two body parts like the earthworm it only has the head and the trunk these ones uh, insects have three body parts just examine eh? and then after having done that you do not have to throw these things away or do not burn them you preserve so do not throw away the collected specimen after laboratory use you have to preserve them uh, for future uh, references that makes the end of our lesson i believe you enjoyed attempt the assignment and our and the answers are within the notes you can even discuss with your peers have a nice time and let us meet in our next lesson goodbye